You feel the air blowing through here, Drew? Yeah. That cost me money. Yeah, I know. You see that Asian kid on the other side? Well, of, he's uh, very there? expensive. Oh, yeah. God knows what no, he, he does. don't come cheap. I'm just, I mean, oh. you know. And that's before the tip. I'm just saying. That's before I put in the tip. I, I get it. You understand? There is fucking money involved in the place. You see this place, a beehive of activity. Yeah. I have to pay these but people. But you built this whole damn thing. I am a small business owner. And by the way, I didn't do it myself. The government did it. What? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, because they, they, they built the road that enabled me to get here in my car. Ah. And which that's you bought. Right. You bought the car. No. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, the government... <laughs> I didn't do it myself, and I didn't do it through because I'm any smarter or any harder working than anybody. It was luck, and it was the government. Those are the two things that built this um, podcasting empire. That's right. what I know. Right. Yes. You see these microphones? Government. Government built them, and guess who paid for them? Government as well. And uh, these uh, curtains hanging behind us with my name printed on it, that's the government. They did it all. So never forget that. And I guess it was the government that they didn't take all your money. That's right. They, they didn't take all your money so you could buy these things. They left me enough money to buy microphones. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they actually uh, donated, actually. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who makes our mics? Road? Yeah, Road. They were man. donated? Well, not donated, but Road, the Road guy said, you know, mention our name. We'll give you the best mics in the business. Made and in the, Australia. Got them. Oh. They got to be good. Lots of convicts over there. So, um, yes, I'm happy to say, everybody, that we have a bunch of people that are being employed <laughs> and have in a shitty economy. So, wait a minute. You know how to create jobs? <laughs> I, thought, I thought only I'm politicians. Not smart like the government. I thought no. only politicians know how to create jobs. We created a bunch of jobs in a down economy, and it's not only the jobs. Well, it's because the government they let made, me do they it. Stimulated they stimulated your business. They stimulated me yeah. to do or, it. Or yes. they left you enough money behind. To do to it. To barely be able right. to do it. Okay. Right. And not only the people you see here working, but remember the guy who put the roof on this place and the guy who put the air conditioning equipment up there and the guy who works at the printing place who printed up these government. logos behind us. Government paid that. Government paid for all of it. Yeah. All that money, the business that sells the laminate that made when I made this console, all the folks, all the stuff we bought the off phone of equipment. Amazon yeah. and all the phone equipment. All that. The, hey, there's a cleaning crew that comes here every Friday. They get paid. Well, there by must me. be some organization or social service that provided all this for you. That's right. Because you couldn't do this yourself. It wasn't because I worked at it. No. And it wasn't because I'm smart. No. That much we know. No, because no. No, I didn't even say we're talking about. I know. Yeah. See, there you go. Impossible. All right. And speaking of the government, for the love of Christ, um, I was, uh, I don't know where you come down on this one, but uh, I was trying to do this real estate deal. And uh, I was told, look, and you got to come up with 30% down payment, oh, right. a bunch of cash. And right. I said, uh, that's really the stumbling block here because I always make my payments, but uh, that's a big chunk of change. And they said, well, it's all 30%. It's not these 25%. Days. These days. These yeah. days yeah. It's all 30%. Because the government and, has to regulate that to make sure the banks have enough money right. to loan you. That's all they can do. And I started thinking about it. And you and I always talk about this. And everyone always does this where they go, Oh, so you want some sort of preferential treatment, right? You want them to make an exception for you. And I always say, not for me, just for anybody. I'll, I'll put myself in a group. And I started thinking about it. I bought, starting uh, about 17 years ago, I bought a house in the Hollywood Hills. Uh, I've never missed a payment or been late on a payment for that house. I bought still, a, You sell that house? Sold it. Yeah, so that. Paid some taxes. Uh, bought a ranch style house, aka the party house. Never missed a payment. Never been late on a payment. Bought a condo in the valley. Bought property in Topanga Canyon. Bought property in Oregon. Bought property, oh, a home in Malibu. Never missed a payment. Never been late on a payment. Never defaulted. Never declared bankruptcy. Never on anything. Then I bought my dad's house to do a TV show, and some of this is in numerical order and some isn't, and some of the stuff I have and a lot of it I don't, but I'm just giving you a little rundown of the last 16, 17 years. Bought my dad's house, put a bunch of money into that, sold that house, never missed a payment, never uh, defaulted on a loan, never was late on a payment. Bought my buddy Ray a house, uh, ended up losing a hundred grand. 
Thanks, Ray. Uh, <laughs> never late on a payment. Never missed a payment. Never defaulted on a loan. Bought a house in the Hollywood Hills. Bought not one warehouse, not two warehouses, but three warehouses uh, for ground total of 12 major property value. Major property buys have never defaulted, never been late, and never missed a payment. So I would say for those individuals, you could make an exception, and I don't think there'd be any danger. Do you know what the bank would say, though? Mm. And you're lucky they haven't found this. Probably because you don't hold all this stuff. Is like, um, you have too much stuff outstanding. I need some, need some more, some more in here. Right. Too much stuff out there. Right. We need to build up the capital, dude. Um, or else we have to call this back. Let me explain do how. You, you understand what they're thinking? I these do days? understand. And I don't have half this stuff, but let me explain how life works. Um, what should be admissible and inadmissible in court? The three phone calls the woman made to 911 screaming, he's going to kill me, before we found her body, after she fell asleep in the tub, uh, that's admissible. And it should be, because it's all you need to know. Mm -hmm. And all you need to know about me and whether you're going to get your payment on your loan is on this piece of paper that has my 12 other properties that have been bought sold and over the course of almost 20 years and never missed a payment and have been late for one. Mm -hmm. I wish things were a little more merit-based. No, the spirit's gone. The spirit is gone. Right? And again, this whole thing of, so they have to make special concessions for you? Not me. Just everyone in the tw 12 property club that's never been late on a payment for 20 years. That That's all luck and the government. <laughs> that's right. And, and just in bit take me... <laughs> luck in the government right i didn't get those properties myself and as you know my dad invented real estate <laughs> what yes what? oh yes he he when i was born oh, the no. first thing i saw was him in a gold blazer standing there that's right and he had his sign and his name planted next to him in the hospital you know my dad he started he invented real he estate invented it Whoa, that's he got me that's in incredible i couldn't have done this without either the government or dad or my dad oh i my see my rich he, dad you rich dad i see he, he he gave i see he gave you all the money and the property and everything else. well yes, there's yes. two ways people yes, have money in this society yes either something the government did for them or you're just born with a silver well, spoon three in your mouth. Three, three look things. there's my dad <laughs> 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 you got. You can go to adamcarolla.com and look at this picture. That is quite a stylish house and uh, presentation. Let me do a quick 41 minutes on this house. <laughs> uh, Did you live in that house? Oh, yes. Oh. oh, yes. Not Taco Bell material, by the way, my uh, new book. That's it is seriously. These is, pictures in here. I'd rather live in a trailer. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, no. People used to pull their trailers up in front of the house and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> they point and laugh. Um. That Now, there's a couple of things about my dad. You can see through the picture there that my dad is in his early 40s when that picture is taken. That, that, yeah. This is his first home. He's younger than you. He's picture. younger than me now, but he's over 40 yeah. when he bought his first house. Yeah. Um, this is the house, by the way, this is after it got a sprucing up. I remember uh -huh. at some point huh. he hired like a landscaper guy and he came and helped out with the dirt driveway. If you if if the picture went to the left just a little further, you would see a dirt driveway wow. that went into a decrepit garage. Um, my dad, this is the house that he bought for $15,000 in modern times. <laughs> Fifteen. I mean, before it wasn't. They didn't pull up in a covered wagon or something. And no, no, <laughs> they didn't just come from the Donner Pass. This is bought in like 1974, 1975. I like the couch in the front area there. Oh yes, yeah. oh yes. My dad liked to recline <laughs> indoors and out. Mm -hmm. um, now this house, I, I don't know. I, I, I hesitate to call it a house cabin. It's, this cabin was bought in the San Fernando. This is in North Hollywood in modern times. It really must have been something built for, like, uh, migrant farm workers or something, the, the orange growers. I, or? They must have kept livestock I mean, in there. seriously, the, guy, the Grapes of Wrath was written about this house. <laughs> Let me <laughs> explain this house. Um, if you walk in the front door, uh, you are in the living room. That is the living room. If you make an immediate left, you are in the one bedroom. That's the window to the left. Yes. That's my dad's palatial. That, that's his palatial master suite wow. in there. Okay. Now, attached to that, where you can see the vent coming out yes. of the roof, yes. that's the one bathroom. So okay. you have to walk through my dad's 
eight by seven foot bedroom to get to the bathroom. Got it. If you keep going straight through that front door and then make a left after about 12 feet, you'll be in the kitchen. We see that awning, yeah, the, the back awning. awning. Yeah, yeah. That is the kitchen in there. And then if you walk up some very tight stair, a very tight, tight staircase, you will get to the top. You see the window at the top? Oh, my God. Is it upstairs? There's a loft. Wow. That's where I slept. Nice. Do you see any air conditioning units that must attached? Have been so cool and breezy in the summer. <laughs> oh. It's it was, only 116 in North Hollywood. It was Hollywood. like a douche commercial. <laughs> it was awesome. Do you see any? Do you even see? No ventilation. A, do you none. see a window mounted air no. conditioning unit? I don't see a window. I see a frame, but the, not a window that would open anyway. No. No. I'm talking about in the entire house. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, they, they didn't have air conditioning when they built these houses. Are you kidding? No. I they mean, didn't invented heaters yet. My dad could have went to Sears and put an air conditioner in the window. No. No, that's, for, now, that's for the Rockefellers. I, I am telling you now, uh, everybody, if you think you know your house is hot, go to that part <laughs> where it's the upstairs office that faces the west or <laughs> that part where yeah. you climb up on – just even climb up on a ladder and stand it next to the ceiling if you have a vaulted ceiling. You feel the heat go yep. up there. And not just go up there, but the, the, on the roof too coming through the radiation. Yeah, yeah. It was – 14 to 20 degrees hotter in the loft, mm. and the house itself was already 98 degrees. It was just, it was fucking cool hand Luke. I was well, in there stuffing hard boiled eggs into my mouth <laughs> and frying up, just burning up at the top of the loft. That's my dad's first house that he bought in his early 40s okay. as an adult well, for $15,000. How dare you? He was completely focused on his family. And child rearing, right. and his commitment to his wife, <laughs> and he was had his he completely spent all his energy right. on his children. Right, and the reason I have my right? podcasting empire is because my dad was the king of real estate, <laughs> and he bought me all these places, <laughs> and then he made all the payments, uh, and that's why the bank cannot trust me. And it, well, is that or the government? Well, here's the we collateral. It's quite a collateral. There, you started you started with a <laughs> hey. Woo. My dad bought that place for fifteen grand and sold it. Four years later for 18 grand. So he turned quite a profit on it. Big money in them days. By the way, when you make $3,000 on a, on the sale of a home, do you even say it normally when you're talking to somebody else? Like you'd say, well, I bought the house for 750 k and I sold it for the same price. You wouldn't say I sold it for 753 and made a made a tidy three grand oh, I think that would go over the, right. <laughs> that's my dad's first house and again i can tell because you see those logs out in the front made for sitting that yes those, oh my those, god those, I missed that. that no there were some trees cut down and this was this is my dad with some pride watering the lawn and so on and so forth so this is this is after the place had been spruced give up. me it just so i can put it in history mm -hmm. what, that's like 1972 what is that that would be uh, North Hollywood off of Laurel Canyon and Oxnard Street, and that would be probably 74, maybe even 75, right, right smack dab in the middle of the 70s, the super depressing 70s.